All right, so just wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial on how to get into the equation editor. So if you go into our class, getting started module, getting started with Schoology, and then submitting your work, you're going to see this uh, assessment here called getting started practice test submission with timer. And what I want to show you here is this fill in the blank question. Uh, let me just go to, it won't look like this for you. I'm going to go to preview and I'm going to start a new attempt. And so let me just get to the one I want to show you here. Um, so this one I believe is actually the, um, Uh, long answer so essay type question but when you see this box here and you see this little pie symbol here this is the equation editor this is insert special characters so we have lots of different special characters in here that you can search through um, if you want to do that but really the main ones that you need are going to be in here in this equation editor and if you open that up it brings up a pop-up window that provides you with the ability to insert information such as operators if i click on that it brings down a drop down menu you have your basic operations those aren't really all that helpful for you but here's a plus minus so if you had an answer like x equals uh, plus minus and then you could do the square root of 10. Yeah, that's weird. Let's put that in. Yeah, it's going to show up nicely when you get there. So there's x equals plus minus the square root of 10. All right. Now you can drop that down. You can do other types of things there. So we got the plus minus. Uh, we have the therefore symbol. So if I was trying to write um, a, a logical argument where I said, um, therefore, not P, I could do therefore tilde, and that is the tilde is shift, and then the key right to the left of the one key. So this is therefore not P, right? So you could do that. Again, that tilde, that's a button on your computer. Shift and right above the tab key should be the tilde key. But there's your therefore, if you need that one. Also on here, you have your union and your intersection. Those are on here. You have your conjunction and your disjunction. Those are all there on your uh, equations. We could do relationships. Let's get rid of there. Let's go back in here. So we could do relationships. We have our congruency symbol, which is going to be very important when we start talking about shapes. All right. So I could say that something like angle. So the angle symbol you could use is this one. So angle ABC is congruent to angle uh, CDE. And that's how you could do something like that. You can use that. This is really a less than symbol, but you could use it as a um, angle symbol. It'll be fine. We also have less than equal to here. And we also have greater than equal to here as well. So you can use those to insert. Um, some other symbols you might be interested in is this perpendicular and this parallel. So we have parallel. We have perpendicular. That's going to be important for our next unit when we're talking about lines. So parallel and perpendicular lines. So those are our relationships. We can come back in here. Uh, we have equations. So if you need a fraction, so here's a fraction bar. If I wanted to do something like uh, x plus 5, move over and say something like x minus 2. Now I have a fraction inserted, and that's really, really useful if you have some compound uh, expressions that are being divided. 
Uh, it is much, much better for you to use this fraction bar than to try to use parentheses correctly. All right, we saw the square root. We also have a cube root. I don't think you really need that too much. But here we have superscript and subscript. So you won't really need the, the subscript too much, but you could use the superscript. Um, let's come outside of here. I can do something like y raised to the third power. I'm going to get into the box. And there we go. Now I have superscript on that y cubed. All right, let's go back in there. Look at some, some other uh, equation stuff. Um, you have your curly braces, but all this stuff is really things that you can type in. Um, I don't really see anything else in there that you need for this. Maybe your prime tick, but you can you can write that as well with your apostrophe is just fine. So arrow notation. Um, we have our arrow to the left. We have our arrow to the right. So if I wanted to write uh, if P then Q. I could do something like that. And now I have if P then Q. Um, we have biconditional symbols. So I could do something like, let's go back in here. Let's bring that down. So I could do something like, P if and only if Q. So there we go. Now we have our biconditional in there. Um, that's really what you need there. These are for vectors and we're not really working with that too much. All right, so let's try, let's move over to the next one here. So miscellaneous, there's our infinity symbol. That's really useful for you. Um, again, we have, you can use this for perpendicular as well. Um, there's a, a better angle symbol, and this is even better. It has a little arc in, right? So if you wanted to say, uh, angle A, so angle A, then you would say is congruent to, angle B. That would be a good statement for you to have to be able to know how to say. If you want to use an equation symbol, then we're going to have to do something like this. Measure of angle A equals measure of angle B. Okay, so this is an e equal sign. Equal signs needs the M in front of the angle. If you have an M in front of the angle, you need to have an equal sign. If you don't have an M in front of the angle, you need to have uh, the congruency symbol. Okay, so make sure you're doing something like that. You could also say this could be measure of angle 15. And then you could throw the degree symbol on there if you want. So measure of angle A equals 15 degrees. We also see inside of here that we have the segment in the arrow. So this is segment AB. Inside the box, A, B. And then we also have, this is going to be, I don't know if it's going to show up very well. All right, let's try that one more time. Miscellaneous. A, B, there's my A, B, and then I can come back in here and I can show you the ray, which is the second one here. 
A, B. And you see that only has an arrow on one side. And then we can do one more. And here we have A, B. And there we have the line A, B. Okay? So coming back in here, um, those are really the main ones. There's your segment, your ray, and your line, your infinity symbol, your degree symbol, your angle symbol. Okay? So don't really need much here in the Greeks. Um, not really a whole lot you're going to use in there. There's a delta here if you need that delta. But um, otherwise, so there's pi in here. So pi here, um, delta here, those are really the only things you're going to need here. And then just making your, your numbers bigger or smaller. All right, so that is your equation editor. So lots of things you can do with this uh, in order to be able to make a nice, clean video. Not video, but answers that are going to be able to be graded easily um, for you and you don't miss points because you didn't use parentheses or you didn't use the right symbol for a segment or line. Use those symbols. If you have any questions, let me know. Also, this is a mock quiz, so I'm sure you've seen this with your time left on your assessments. So um, that's about it. Let me know if you have questions, all right?